Hey there, home labbers and engineers. So today we're gonna to look at setting up some simple monitoring for a bunch of our home lab services. And while I am a big fan of Grafana, it can be quite complicated to get set up. And Uptime Kuma is a really, really good monitoring tool that is arguably dead simple in setting up, in configuring, and getting it all up and running. So today we're gonna to go through looking at how to set up and run Uptime Kuma on your home lab. Here I have a blank Ubuntu 22.04 VM. It effectively has nothing at all on it. So first things we're gonna do is sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade, we'll be back in a minute. So a simple word about installing Uptime Kuma. There is a Docker image for it. If you are a Docker person and you like Docker, you can run it in Docker. I don't typically run anything in Docker because I find Docker networking as well as attaching storage in Docker. I find it to be great at just working and be really frustrating whenever anything goes wrong. So for those reasons, I don't typically run Docker very often. And so along with this guide, I'm going to install it without Docker. If you want to install it with Docker, you will need to get Docker Compose, Docker Up, and all of the Docker stuff working. And I'm not going to provide a guide on running Docker. So outside of Docker, let's take a look at how we can set up and run Uptime Kuma on this VM. So running Uptime Kuma outside of Docker, we are going to be running it on a Node.js server. So with that, we're gonna sudo apt install curl in case it is not already installed. And then we are going to set up node by using NVM. And this is the, the curl in order to set up NVM. Once that is set up, all we have to do is type source, redo our bash RC. And with that, NVM is up and running. We're going to install node 20. And if you want to install a different version of Node, all you have to do is type nvm install and then whichever version of Node you want. 16, 18, 20, whatever you feel like. And you can install multiple versions of Node. And then if you want to use a certain version of Node, all you have to do is type nvm use and then 16, 18, 20, whatever you feel like. Once we have installed and are using Node, like in here I'm using Node 20.10, you'll see that if I type in npm-v, I also have npm installed. We also need to have git installed, so we'll sudo apt install git. And then we will also need pm2 installed. And I can, all, I can never remember, I always forget. But PM2 is an NPM package, and you will want to use NPM install PM2-G to install it globally. Now that we have all those pieces installed, we can start setting up Uptime Kuma. For that, we're going to clone the Uptime Kuma Git repository. Then we're going to cd into uptime kuma. Then we're going to npm run setup. Once the setup 
has finished. The very first thing, especially if you look at the Uptime Kuma documentation, they tell you to try option one first. And all you have to do with that is node server server.js. And we do see a thing saying that it is listening on 3001, so let's take a look. If I go ahead and open up a web browser and browse directly to my server IP, it said it was running on port 3001, so I put it on 3001. And when I go there, it takes me directly over to setup. So username FE engineer. Put in a password, hit create, and it appears that Uptime Kuma is up and running. We know Uptime Kuma is now working appropriately, so you will want to control C and stop Uptime Kuma from processing. It will return you back to a simple command prompt like this. And now what we want to do is set up Uptime Kuma to automatically turn on whenever the system turns on. And for that, we're going to use PM2. With PM2, it's a simple npm install PM2. We're gonna give it the dash G flag to install it globally. At the same time, we are going to use PM2 to install PM2-log rotate. This is effectively just a logging service and it, it will rotate your logs for you. Once you install log rotate, it will automatically come online. I had Uptime Kuma running through PM2 already and so that's why mine appears stopped, but you will not have that quite yet. Now to start the actual Uptime Kuma service, make sure that you are CD'd into your Uptime Kuma directory. And all you'll need to type in is PM2 start server slash server.js dash dash name Uptime Kuma. PM2 will go ahead and start that process. And so Uptime Kuma is now online. PM2 log rotate is online. Now that PM2 has our Uptime Kuma service, we can just type in PM2 save and, and PM2 startup. So here's PM2 save and then PM2 startup. And you'll see that it, it saved the process list. So it saved log rotate and uptime Kuma. And now in order to set up the startup script, we have to copy and paste what it gave us here. So just highlight it, control C, paste it in, hit enter. And now we have an actual system control service that will automatically run these PM2 commands to start our services automatically whenever the server starts. Now that Uptime Kuma is set to start up with our server, Let's go back to our actual web browser and configure Uptime Kuma. One of the very first things we may want to do is check if you own a domain name to see if that domain is actually resolved through DNS. And to check a domain name, and specifically to check that DNS is up and running, you can click Add New Monitor, go down to DNS, Type in a friendly name, 
my website. And then you want to put in the .com or .net or .biz or .whatever, the actual domain name that you own, such as mydomain.com. And then you can set the resolver because since we're checking to see if DNS completes, you have to have a DNS server that you are hitting. And 1.1.1.1 is Cloudflare, 8.8.8.8 .8 is Google, 8.8.4.4 .4 is Google's alternate. Uh, you can potentially use other DNS servers, but these ones tend to be some of the fastest. So I would recommend using those. And of course, it is going to look specifically for an A record. That's what actually resolves your domain name. Other things like C names and MX records are used for different things. MX is for mail. C name is for effectively aliases or alternate domains. But generally speaking, if you're checking to see if your domain name is up and running, you probably want to check against an A record first. And so that will set up a domain name check or a DNS check. Let's take a look at how to set up some other things. Let's do a ping. So a ping, I happen to be running a pi hole. So if you wanted to set up a pi hole in the monitor type for a pi hole, you could either do a ping or an HTTPS. HTTPS is basically going to try to actually hit the website and get a page. And so for my pi hole, I'm just going to label one as pi hole one. I'm gonna put the URL as the correct URL. This URL is not available outside of my network, so I don't really mind it being shown on YouTube. And with that, I'm going to get a thing about certificate ex expiration. And for this right now, for some reason, it is not pulling the correct SSL cert. And so with that, you can ignore SSL cert errors if you want. And with that, all you need to do is hit save. And it will come up and be on your dashboard now. And you'll see that you have all these green markings. Green means good. If you happen to be running pie holes and you happen to be running two of them, you can just clone it. And with that, we'll change it to pie hole two. And I'm pretty sure that one runs at pie hole two. Save that. And now that one shows as up and running as well. If you wanted to be able to just simply ping certain pieces of hardware, so for instance, maybe if you have a web server up and running and you don't really want to ping the page that it may be running, but you want to ping the overall web server to see if it's up and running, My web server happens to run on this URL. And you'll see that I'm just pinging that VM to make sure that VM responds. I'm not pinging to see if a website is up or down. Kind of like we did with the pie holes. If you wanna see that an actual website is up or down, you will ping or you'll monitor through HTTPS or HTTP. If you wanna check if your website is able to be fetched through DNS, then you'll do DNS. If you just want to ping a specific machine to see if it will respond back, use a ping. If you wanna ping against a specific TCP port, You can do something like a Minecraft survival server. Uh, I think it's 60.
and my Minecraft server is running on 19132. Oh, connection refused. So as you can see here, I have gone through and I have been adding a whole bunch of home services. So I've got my pie holes, I've got my two actual servers. One runs ESXi, one, run, one is running Proxmox. I made sure that I can ping my actual router. I'm pinging my own web server. I checked to make sure that I have actual internet and I can get and receive from google.com. So there's lots of different things you can do for setting up Uptime Kuma. It's pretty simple and straightforward once you kind of get the hang of it. I will say that a lot of times you may find that in certain instances you may just want to ping things to make sure that, you know, they're running. And in other instances you may want to try to use TCP ports and things like that. For whatever reason, my Minecraft servers I was not able to connect over TCP with a cert, uh, certain TCP port. And other things I was able to connect over a certain TCP port. A lot of this is going to start very quickly running into potentially problems with your own network of depending on how your firewalls are set up, depending on how your security is set up. You may be able to ping just about everything, but you may not be able to, from inside of your network, TCP into another piece of your network. And again, that could be because of all sorts of settings on your own router and port forwarding and things along those lines. But this is a pretty straightforward setup and will, should get you up and running with Uptime Kuma. So now let's look at some of the other things we can do with it. So in order to group up our pie holes, we made a group and then we'll go to the second pie hole and we will add it to the monitor group of pie holes. So there we go. So now we can look at our pie holes as one. Now let's go over to our server, the R620. Let's add a new group. Let's call it servers. Save that. Now let's go to the R930, edit that monitor group servers so there we go okay so i have gone ahead effectively and cleaned just about everything up and i have a whole bunch of groups so i've got minecraft servers nodes pie holes servers services and websites and their dns and then just an overall, can I hit the external internet? And you'll see everything is up and running. After that, there's only a few small things that people may wanna do. If you go over to settings, inside of appearance, obviously if you wanna change the theme around, change the theme around, notifications, you can absolutely set up notifications. You can send your yourself messages on Telegram. You can set up Slack channels. I believe Discord is in here. So setting up your own notifications, they're all gonna be a little bit different. Um, email and SMTP is probably gonna be difficult for most folks unless you have an actual SMTP server that actually works. So over here in Discord, if you wanted to create alerts, what you can do is right click up on your own server. And if you do that, you will see server settings. And inside of that, there will be something called integrations. And from integrations, we can go over to webhooks, add a new webhook, and we will call this Uptime Kuma and we will put it in a specific channel. We'll put it in alerts and we will copy the webhook URL. And then we will save changes and get rid of this. And then we will paste the webhook URL in there. Give it a display name And we will 
will go ahead and test it. And not that it particularly matters, but over in my Discord, I do actually see a message from the Uptime Kuma bot that said Discord Alerter Testing. So we will go ahead and save that. And so along with that, when I set up my notifications, down at the bottom, there are things that say apply to all existing monitors. I did check that and default enabled, I checked that, meaning that any more monitoring that I set up will automatically uh, be set up to run through Discord for me. So that's one way that you can set up notifications and monitoring, and it's super simple. Uh, there are just as simple ways to do it through Slack, uh, as well as a couple other ones. So those are some good things to do because having all this monitoring is great, but if you don't get notified if something goes wrong, then, well, it doesn't help all that much. So there you have it. That is how you can set up Uptime Kuma, monitor all of your home lab services, servers, whatever you want. You can group them all up. You can set up notifications to get sent out to you and you should now be able to monitor your, your entire home lab pretty easily. And of course with this, I just left it at this default URL. I will actually end up putting it through reverse proxy over onto my web server and stuff like that. Now I'll give it an SSL cert and all those good things. But this is Uptime Kuma, you know, in a nutshell. It's pretty straightforward and it's pretty sweet. I hope this has helped. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. So after I recorded the initial video, Uptime Kuma had an update. And so I figured I might as well show folks when there are updates available, how to update. So here on Uptime Kuma, you'll see it says there is a new update. So in order to actually update it, here on my server, I have just cd'd into the Uptime Kuma directory. And we're going to type get fetch all. And there's a new branch. So we're going to check out the new branch, 1.23.10. And now that we have the newest branch, 1.23.10, all we have to do is run npm install dash dash production. Run npm run download dash dist and then pm2 restart up time kuma uptime kuma is now running again And if we look, that new update is now gone. Thank you so much for watching my videos, home labbers and engineers. I create and edit all of these videos on my own, so any likes and subscribes will massively help out the channel and allow me to continue creating content to help people. If you got value out of this, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel to be notified when new content drops. If there's something I've not covered but you would like to see a video on it, please leave a comment down below. And again, a massive thank you to everyone. I hope you have a great day.